Hello my friends and welcome back to Mine Colony's Byzantine. Last episode we got loads done, got another builder's hut and everything up to level 2. Also we started building our bridge over the river and built some avenues and retaining walls. And between episodes I've gone a little bit further, so let me show you what we've done. So it was time for me to reflect on where we're actually going to go with the colony. Where are we going to start putting buildings? So we built some more avenues over here on the corner behind the builder's hut and lowered the road down. And put in a small retaining wall next to those builder's huts. Now come with me, if you will, over to the tavern. Yeah, that's right. All of that ugly dirt now is hidden by a road that goes all the way around the tavern and then a retaining wall that borders that against the water. And now last but not least, it was time to finish the bridge and extend the seawall all the way around from the tavern over to the other edge of the border of the colony. Now I wanted to do so much more, but we're limited by how much room we actually have to build. Oh man, now one of you guys in the comment section said, why aren't you putting your builder's goggles in the curio slot? And there's a good reason. It doesn't go. I'm clicking and nothing's happening. So you have to put the builder's goggles in your straight up head slot. So the avenues look great and so does the bridge, but you guys have made some valid concerns. Number one, there's a lot of deep slate bricks over here and it looks kind of samey. So what I might do is come back with maybe some cracked deep slate bricks and mix it up so we have a little bit of, uh, I don't know, texture going on with these avenues. And also, of course, the bins. I was asking you guys what you thought I should put in here. The problem is because they're four, there's no middle block for us to put a tree in. And if I put some like two by two redwood saplings in there, the bases of those trees will expand out and kind of ruin the road because they get very thick. We're talking like three C's here. So I do think the best option is flowers. And over there, what do you see? Oh man, they look like some lilacs. I think that will look perfect. One, two, three, and we've run out of lilacs. Not a problem though, we can spam some bone meal on these bad boys and get loads more, but for now, this looks okay. But what else can we do to bring up these roads, give some decoration? Because basically we've got the avenues, the bridge, the roads, the retaining walls. They're all great, they're functional, they are decoration kind of. But we need to add a little bit of spice. So we're going to go over to the spice section. Just kidding, the decoration section. And here we go. Now if you click on road, in decoration, there's a lot of embellishments that you can add to a road. Like for example, we could put a cart in the road. What else is in the decorations list? Aha, here we go. We've got lampposts, lamppost corners and lamppost doubles. Also got some street planters and some street seats. Oh man, I love me some street seats. So the lamppost is pretty cool and pretty simple, but also it's got levels. One, two, and three. But honestly, it sounds like a great idea to sprinkle a few of these lampposts along the edge over here. Oh, you know what? That's going to look great. And then as you go from one, two, to three, it's going to look even better. And what are the required materials? Oh yeah, super easy to make. Just spruce a bit of chain. And we'll sprinkle a few of those around. Now let's take a look at the street seats. Oh man, yeah, this looks pretty cool. A great place to come along and just take a load off. Oh yeah, and it goes from level one to level two. Oh yeah, this looks actually really cool. So I'll splash some of these decorations around in between episodes because it's a lot of busy work, not what we're doing today. Today what we're going to be tackling is something pretty cool. Come over here if you will. Now this isn't the real border of the colony, is it? No, that's right. We've got like a fake border going on and a real border going on over here. I don't know why that happens, but it does. So basically what I was thinking is, wouldn't it be really cool if we have a giant wall that spans from this bank over here, through the river, all the way over there to the other bank? That'd be crazy. But before we do, I want to expand the colony borders just a little bit because this is a little bit too close. But if we can get the wall over there, roughly where the sugarcane is, I think that will give us a nice bit of extra space over here and be a really cool way to defend that section of the colony. So we're going to toss down some guard towers over here to see if we can get that border pushed back just a little bit. Let's head back to the boat and make some guard towers. You guys also mentioned that the builders huts were too close and I didn't realize it until I was watching back editing the video that I put the builder's hut too close 
to the one at the back. Don't worry though, as you can see now, we deconstructed it, which took ages actually. When a builder deconstructs a building, they don't just plonk the blocks down, they actually have to mine and dig away the blocks. But you do get to keep them, which is great and means putting it back up at level two, one block down this way was very achievable. So over here to the crafting bench and let me take a look. We're looking for guard towers, pretty simple to make. Wait, no, that's not a guard tower, there we go. And yeah, you use a bow a build tool and a bunch of planks and luckily enough I think we have loads of string because guess what flax is string now we did have to delete the flax farm over there as you can see because building the seawall broke that but um you know what that's fine we'll build another flax farm somewhere meantime though we did get absolutely plenty of this stuff and we've also got some string in here as well cool stuff so there you go, ladies and gentlemen, two guard towers per craft, which means we're going to get absolutely loads of these bad boys. One, two, up to six. Boom. Do it again. Oh, wait, whoops. That's shears. And one more time. Bam. Ten guard towers. Because what I want to make sure we do is absolutely not skimp on guards. I want to make sure that when the first raid comes, we can answer it with guards alone. I don't want to have to do any of the fighting. I want my knights and my warriors and my archers and maybe my druids to do that for me. What kind of a mayor picks up a sword? So let's go find some spots to expand our colony. So here we go. Military. Boom. Guard tower. What's a droman? Oh my god, wow. Oh, ho, 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 hello. You're not a guard tower. Oh, look at those creeper faces on the side. What the hell is this? It's in military. Is it a guard tower? Level two and level one. What does level two have? What is inside here? Oh, wow, look at this. This boat comes chock a block full of guard towers. That's really, really, really cool. So building one of these on the river is gonna be a great way for us to get loads more guards into the colony. You know, I was worried because Byzantine said build by a sea, but I thought to myself, when you build by a sea, you create so much space that you just can't use because you can't build buildings on the water. But it looks like things like these boats really help you save space. Anyway, where are the guard towers? So all the guard towers plumb into the walls for Byzantine really, really, really well. And that's going to come in handy for us because I want to splash a few guard towers along the wall that goes over the river. Oh, hey, look at this. There's also a coastal tower and this could be the one for us. There we go. This spot looks good to me right on the edge. And this is a really impressive looking tower. And it also levels up from one to two to three to four to five. Oh yeah, look at this. These are going to look majestic as hell when they're level 5. Giant tall towers protecting our colony from raiders coming down the river. Let's get these suckers built. The materials are not very scary indeed. We've got the spruce, we've got the oak, we've got loads of diorite. Oh man, yeah. So here we go, the guard towers. On the border of the river, these things look beautiful. Now, because our builder's hut is level two, that means we're gonna be going all the way to level two with these builds. We have loads of materials, so there's really no excuse to ever leave a building that we build at level one, no way. Guard towers are great for two reasons. Number one, we need them to fend off the raids. But number two, it's also a great way to get your guys' names in. So all of you Patreon and YouTube members who've submitted names are likely going to become guards to help defend against barbarians and other crazy kind of raids. One thing I'm not sure about yet is what kind of ratio we're going to go with archers to knights. It's always nice to have a mix of both, but the question is, do you want more knights? Do you want more archers? Which ones are better? Early game archers often have really bad aim until their stats get much better and you can train them up at the archery. Knights though, it's, it's pretty difficult to miss with a sword. Although to be fair, when I'm playing Baldur's Gate 3, my character somehow managed to do that. So okay, the guard towers are in place and these things look amazing. They were very simple to build. Just beige bricks and cream bricks went into upgrading this from level 1 to 2. Man, I wonder what the upgrade materials are to level 3. Let's take a look. Oh my god, yeah, 
this is actually really, really, really simple to build. We kind of have everything we need to go to level three. That really does mean we should be getting the Builder's Huts to level three ASAP. Now you'll see, we've already got John Cletus here as a knight, Mr. Dawn Sales himself, commanding mustache and all, he is ready to rock and take out some rude Raiden dudes. We also set in Manage Workers the build hiring to be automatic because we want guards to be replaced as and when they die. Being a knight is a pretty dangerous job. We don't want our colonists to die, but if anybody's gonna, we want it to be a knight. So when John Cletus finally bites the dust, he gets somebody automatically replacing him. And also random nerd Vink over here is knight number two. Now we had to build these kind of janky stairs just so we could get up, but that's fine. We'll remove those later when we kind of plumb all this in. Now also we've had a bit of a calamity. I forgot to turn off kids will be born. And that means we've had two children over here on the colony. Take a look, it's Tuppy Hoobies, <laughs> hello, amazing, and Zelda Sake. Man, these are two really amazing superhero names. But this is not ideal, because we don't actually have any houses, and that means the kids live at the tavern. Ugh, never a great place for a child. Hey, Big Cackle, oh my god, what a name, I love it. Can we get you in? What's it today, then? Oh, 30 bucks. No, maybe not. So there's Tuppy Hoobies. Oh man, amazing. So the kid models have had an upgrade as well. So where's Zelda Sake? I guess she's wandering around too. That's fine. So let's go over here and see how far the colony borders now have been expanded. This is the main reason why we even built these two guard towers. So I'm pretty excited to see how much extra room we've created for ourselves. Oh yeah, look at that. The borders now extend real far. And this is exactly what we wanted. This is ideal. We want the guard towers to come here the wall to span across there, but to end before the mountain ends. So that line there is a good line for us. So let's get a vantage point, probably from the top of this guard tower, and start putting down the foundations for this first wall. Okay, so here we go with the build. You can see there in the background, those are the borders we're working with, and the wall is right up against it, hugging it. The wall starts off with a straight main section, and that links up to the gate you can see being built as well. Now, work was a bit slow on the gate because Nikki, midway through, did get sick. Next to the gate, we have another section of main straight wall, and then that connects to a guard tower, very similar to the ones you see along the coast, but this one is a little bit bigger. Now we're gonna also need a way to get up the walls. So the next main wall segment comes with its own set of stairs. So our guards will have a way to man those parapets. The whole structure is made of wood at the moment. We will be upgrading it to two later on though. And that is a whole bunch of beige bricks and cream bricks very, very manageable. And then the last two segments along here are another straight section of wall that's connected to a guard tower. This does go right up against the mountainside, but I'm kind of thinking what we could do is raise the wall up onto the mountain and continue it all the way around. But who knows? Wait and see. Okay, and doesn't this look incredible? Look at this. Oh my God, it's just so huge. Now we had to add some feet, as you can see, underneath the wall, because otherwise it was gonna hover in the air. And there's still some work to be done, making sure we can bring this all the way down to the bed of the river. Also, check this out. So like you may have seen in the build, the gate is kind of like hovering. Now, if you put this gate on land, it's great. It works perfectly, and these pistons at the bottom actually function to raise and lower the gate. At least, I think. Let's see if we can check that out. Now, I'm not sure what we're going to do with this island in the middle here. It feels kind of out of place, and there's not really a building we can put on it. So I'm thinking maybe get rid of the island and put a boat here. Maybe that big boat with all the guard towers. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Oh my god, it's pretty savage. I'm gonna have to get rid of this rain. I love the rain, it's very atmospheric, but lightning will ruin my day. Also, this entire wall is made of wood. Can you imagine 
if a fire started here. It would be a tragedy. Anyway, let's take the stairs up to the top of the wall. Oh man, I bet the colony looks amazing from the top. Oh yeah, it does. This is going to be super fantastic. But there's got to be a switch somewhere that can let me uh, raise and lower the bridge. Aha! Yes, there is. Now, this is kind of curious. I think maybe the gate is the wrong way around. It doesn't matter too much because the build is mostly symmetrical. It's just on where the gate is. But here's the lever. And, realistically, you don't really want a lever on the outside, so raiders can just punch this to get in. Okay, so let's pull this sucker. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Very cool. And that's a really nice gate system. But the problem with this gate is it doesn't go all the way up, which means it looks kind of silly. And also, being on the river, we don't really want this gate to, well, yeah, be closed. So we're going to dig out all of this wood and uh, these multi-pistons at the bottom just to make it look a bit better. There we go, that's looking much nicer. So really, don't be afraid to tinker with these decorations to get what you want out of them, because every colony is different and everybody's going to want a different kind of wall around their base. But that's pretty cool. Now, I do want to get these up to level two, but oh my god, it took me so long to get these to level one. I think that's something I'll do in the background between episodes. Oh man, though, that looks super amazing. I'm super happy with how that's come out. Now, another thing we're going to have to do after we tidy up the wall is bring over this avenue. Now, I'm a bit nervous of avenues. They look amazing, but they're also really big, and big roads just swallow up space for buildings. So I think what we might do is end the avenue and transition to a more like road style, like we have outside the tavern. Something that's thinner and will give us room to put buildings against that wall there. Now, while the building was being built, there was a bit of a problem. One of our builders did get the flu, or influenza, the flu, whatever the disease was, they needed carrots and potatoes. So that gives us four more guard towers to place, because I feel like getting eight down is just a great number. We're going to have loads and loads of guards. It's going to really help us protect the colony. But where are we going to put these? Well, I'm kind of thinking what they might work well as is over here, where the wall bends around. That could be a good spot for a guard tower. And likewise, also the coastal walls that kind of zigzag in over here, they could be a good spot too. And that would be three extra guard towers. Let's see if we can put those down. Yeah, I think on the corner like that might be a pretty cool shout. Now, they're obviously not going to be level five to start with. So yeah, you know what? I'm going to seal the deal on that. We're going to have to splash guard towers around wherever we can. And on the corners of walls, retaining walls and sea walls is a great, great spot. Okay, there we go, that's three. We're gonna save the last guard tower because these are gonna come in handy later, especially for building things like the guard boat and other structures that just have a guard tower attached to them. We'll probably go through loads and loads of these. But yeah, let's fire up the camera and watch the builders go through this. So here we go, three more guard towers, one on the edge, which is gonna be near to where I want to put the warehouse over on the right there. But then these two on the left, on the corners, of this miniature kind of harbour section. I'm not sure what we're going to do with that harbour. I'm kind of tempted to spin the boat around and kind of park it in there, because that might look a bit neater and free up the river. We're only building these to level one on camera, but once we're done with the episode, I will be going back and bringing those up to level two. They match quite nicely as well. These guard towers are built specifically to be put on coastal sections, but there's a whole bunch of different guard towers that you can check out in the Byzantine style. So Spamanti, thank you for giving us loads of options. In fact, the trickiest material to gather for all of these builds was probably the colony banners. Needed to kill a few sheep for those. Oh man, yeah, so seven guard towers, a potential seven more knights to populate our colony. But if we want to get more dudes from the tavern, we're going to need some ingredients that they're asking for to come and join us. Because these dudes are definitely not cheap. But let's go and get some food, because when we find a colonist that has a price we can afford, it's always good to feed them up with uh, some bread to make sure they hang around until we can gather the materials to get them in. 
Now I've also cleared out the top of this boat. Basically there was a lot of stuff here that we had to get rid of. I've changed that into trap doors and that's freed up some more space to put down some botany hopper pots because we're gonna need them for things like sunflowers, etc. Anyway, let's go and check out the tavern. All of the names that you guys have suggested both on the Patreon page and on the YouTube members community post are in the names list. So there's a whole bunch of names we could potentially find over here in the tavern. And who's this? It's Witchy Wolf Zips. All right, well, are you cheap? You gonna go for a soak? You are so wise. I am wise, you know, <laughs> thank you very much. Anyway, Lapis Lazuli, I think we got some of that. So let's give her a bit of bread. Yes. And go check the computer. Actually, it might be in my backpack. Oh no, there it is, 28. Wow, is that exactly the right amount for her? Oh my God, this looks, looks like I just spawned it in, but I promise I found that in the mine. I think there's even footage of me doing it. So boom, who's next? Over here, we've got Sklerbitha Regia. Okay, another Sklerbitha. And she's gonna want sunflowers. Sunflowers we can get. Just gotta go and find the biome. Hi. Who else is knocking around? Selda Sake. Oh, looks like she grew up. Oh, and so did Tuppy Hoobies. Oh, that's amazing. Well, that means there's two dudes we don't need to fill. Let's consult the town hall now to see how many more dudes we need. Yeah, so colonists having babies is actually a good idea early on because getting dudes from the tavern can be very expensive. The only reason we're doing it is because when children are born, they keep the names of their parents, well, the, the surnames at least, and we want to get as many of your names in as possible. So we actually need five more dudes. That's a lot of dudes. Now these guard towers are one block lower than they should be, but don't worry, that's by design. There's water in this guard tower at the moment, so whoever comes over here to protect this is gonna have a terrible time. But don't worry, when I get these up to level two after the episode, I'll also trim up the path and make it nice and neat. Don't worry, it'll be fixed. Now I've told you guys how we find sunflowers before, but if you want a reminder, what we do is we go to the map now, sunflowers only spawn in sunflower plains. Now, in base Minecraft, that's much easier to find because there's less possible biomes. But because we're playing modded, there could be a whole number of biomes. And so finding sunflower plains, oh, here we go, is actually easier than I thought it would be. Right down here, we have a sunflower plains. Beautiful. Let's go pick up some sunflowers. So my friends, it's time to kick back and chill. We're taking the river all the way south. Basically, if we just keep going south until there's nothing but land, that's gonna be where the sunflower biome is. This episode has been pretty cool. I've been looking forward to seeing what the walls are for Byzantine because I think the Byzantinian Empire, the Byzantine Empire, was pretty famous for amazing walls. And looking at it, the walls that we put down do not disappoint. They're huge and amazing. I'd like to see any raiders get through those. And I mean, unless they bring a trebuchet, I don't think they're gonna get through. Unless they dig. We've hired a lot of guards this episode, but I want you guys in the comment section to post the name of your favorite knight champion. Basically, I'm thinking if we could have any hero as a knight on our colony, who would it be? I'm thinking maybe Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. He'd be pretty good on our guard team. Be Mad Mardigan from Willow. Ooh, or maybe somebody from Game of Thrones. I mean, the mountain is an obvious choice, but he's a bit of a dick. So maybe Sir Barristan Selmy instead. Oh man. There's a lot of cool knight champions in movies and television, but let me know in the comment section who you think the ideal soldier would be to protect our Byzantine Empire. Oh man, what's that up there? That is a really big barn. Do you wanna go check it out? I feel like I do. The moment of truth. I see a green arrow up there. Does that mean there's a friendly dude? A friendly dude inside here? Maybe some kind of trader. Oh, look at this. Oh man, horses. Horses, a villager. This is amazing. I feel like we might have to come back here, capture these steeds and bring them home to Constantinople. 
But while we're here, we're definitely grabbing these hay bales. They're amazing. Oh, and booty in here. We'll take the seeds, they'll come in handy. Loads of wheat here. Oh yeah, good stuff. I think it's just like a like a farmer's barn. Well, okay, time to sail home. Where is Sunflower Girl? There it was, Sclerbetha. You're about sunflowers, aren't you? Boom. Did she join the colony? I think she did, right? Or did she leave? No. And there we go, all of the guys from the tavern now have been hired. So we're gonna have to wait for people to spawn in there before we can recruit any more dudes. Oh man, Tuppy is enjoying a bit of a soak, and I'm getting soaked. So I think that's where we're gonna call this episode, but we got a lot done. Thank you very much for watching this episode of our Mine Connolly's Byzantine playthrough. We built the walls, we built seven guard towers, so we've got a veritable army now ready for our first raid. When that'll happen, I don't know. But I feel like now, when it does, we'll be ready. We will need to get the guard swords and all the, all the things they need to be guards. And I'll take care of that, plus getting the guard towers and walls up to level two between now and next episode. Next time, we're really going to have to think about food. We've got the beds in the tavern, we've got new dudes and guards, but we really need a way to feed our colonists. So maybe a farm, maybe a fisherman's hut, maybe a restaurant. But until next time, a massive thank you. Don't forget to hit 